each second take to show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The International Energy Agency has outlined a sustainable recovery plan, which urges governments to integrate clean energy into their COVID-19 stimulus plans. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the plan and what this could mean for South Africa. Hi Terence. Hi Sonora. What is the background to this report and what are its main findings? As you know, you know the, the whole world, given the COVID-19 pandemic, is looking at stimulus plans to get their economies back into a growth mode. We've descended into a massive uh, recession around the world and there's a threat of a depression unless interventions are made. So we've seen governments around the world already making announcements of close on $9 trillion of support, some of which has energy integrated into that, but not all of it. So the background to this is that the International Energy Agency with the International Monetary Fund they looked at the impact that uh, a clean energy transition or an integration of clean energy into the stimulus plans uh, of governments could have on growth, on employment, and on uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And the outcome is, is very favorable in the sense that if $1 trillion a year is spent over the next three years to 2023, uh, the, 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 the report shows that uh, global growth will be lifted every year by 1.1%. So over the period, three and a half percent, that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Nine million jobs would be created or saved in the energy sector. And that's uh, significant because there's a number of jobs, about three million currently at risk in the sector, which employs about 40 million people. And importantly, 2019 would be the definitive peak in greenhouse gas emissions. And we'd see far, far, far lower uh, greenhouse gas emissions in 2023 than we currently see, about 4.5 gigatons less. The IEA proposes massive new renewables deployments over the next three years. Yes, there's a number of components to this proposal, this recovery plan, but renewables is a big feature, mostly uh, onshore wind or wind generally, and solar photovoltaic technologies, because these have emerged as the two cheapest new generation technologies in most countries around the world. And besides what is already baked in, and we saw about 176 gigawatts of renewables added in 2019, that will stay around that level this year probably. It's one of the few sectors that won't decline in the energy space. But this plan proposes a massive scale up, a yearly 130 gigawatts extra into uh, the deployments so that we put the world on this different trajectory in terms of greenhouse gas emissions and start electrifying other modes of energy. So uh, have more electricity in mobility, more electricity in heating. And that's, so that's a big part of the plan, but it also has other components and the big job spinner would be in the energy efficiency space. So the re deep retrofitting of existing buildings and the building of new green buildings so that uh, we have a far more energy efficient building fleet, which would also help in lowering greenhouse gas emissions. And then there's other, other elements to the plan around electric vehicles, around sustaining uh, the existing nuclear and hydro fleets beyond their design life over the period, and uh, also putting in research and development money into future energy technologies. What message does this send to South African policymakers? One of the key messages that came out is that we need shovel-ready projects, projects that are ready to go and can be financed. And it also appeals for this to be crowding in private resources. So not only state bailout money or state support taxpayer money, but private resources. So the messages for South Africa is not to pursue interventions that have long lead times. So we see a big priority being given by our Department of Mineral Resources and Energy to a nuclear new build. There's no doubt that there's no shovel that's going to be in the ground for a nuclear new build uh, in the next three years. This is, these are long lead items. And uh, there's a lot of debate whether we should even be looking at things like small scale modular reactors that aren't even commercially available globally. And the other thing is to crowd in private finance. So we know there's no appetite 
amongst private financiers for nuclear or even clean coal and less and less for fossil fuel projects. So the most logical conclusion that we have to draw is if we want to have a portfolio of several ready projects that our stimulus money can go into, that uh, uh, foreign and domestic private money can go into, and that we can coordinate with the rest of the world, we should be focusing on the renewable energy, energy efficiency components of the plan. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news and notes. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.